Hello, this is Julia Child. Bon appétit. No, this is Sally. I'm helping out Miss Rosemary. She made a recipe this week on video and was concerned that it didn't turn out for uh, sticky plasters over in jolly old England. So she said, please make this to make sure that it's going to work for somebody else. So I'm making this, even though I'm not a big baker because baked goods are my weakness. Um, but I'm going to do this right now. So I've got everything set up so I'll be super fast and then I'll cut you off and then I'll go bake it and then I'll come back and try to figure out how to put the two videos together. Let's hope I can figure that out. Okay, we are going to make Miss Rosemary's Gastric Roses um, protein cake that she made. And she used, and here we go. Let me just pick everything. I'm just going to do this. Watch, guys. Watch. And I'm going to talk to you as I read the recipe. Okay. Uh, except I didn't measure out the protein flour. All right, three quarters of a cup of protein flour, of which I really don't have. And I know this is a liquid protein measure, a liquid uh, measure, not a, not a dry measure, but it's the only one I could find right this second. So there's the protein powder. Boom. Okay, and this is PB2 because I don't have the uh, Trader Joe's peanut flour. This is apparently exactly the same. This happens to be something I've had in the cabinet a while, and I really didn't use it much. So there, that's done. Three quarters of a cup of protein flour or almond flour of your choice. Um, two scoops of protein powder. Boom, boom. I want you to see. Look, I measured them out. And these are the very bowls I bought to eat after I had weight loss surgery. And that's what I used to eat. This is still what I eat ice cream out of if I have full fat. One, two. That's two scoops. Two scoops of protein powder. Um, and that is your basic, you know, Walmart way cookies and cream protein. Okay. So... So that's that, and then it's one teaspoon of baking powder. Of course, I didn't bring my thingy, but I can eyeball. That's a teaspoon. Even though you're not supposed to eyeball when you bake, I'm eyeballing anyway. And then it says two tablespoons of butter, or four if you think it might be dry. Your choice. Well, I'm going to not use butter because I only have a little bit of butter. I'm going to use applesauce. There's the applesauce, and I'm just eyeballing it, guys. I think from the amount of ingredients I have, it might be kind of wet, but we'll see. Okay, applesauce tastes good. Four ounces of Greek yogurt. This again, I didn't exactly measure, but I think four ounces is a half a cup, and that's about a half a cup. Okay, that's my wonderful fat-free beige Faya Greek yogurt. What's next on the list? Six packages of Truvia. Oh, crap. You know what? I just used the last of my, my Truvia. I might have a tiny, whiny, whiny bit left. I have very, very little left. So there, that's how much Truvia I have left. And I honestly don't have anything else except my Tarani French vanilla syrup, which will be sweet. So since it had vanilla in it anyway, I'm just going to do this. Not very scientific, I know. But you know what? If it's just for being sweet, although it's liquid, it might affect it a little bit. I figured, whatever. Okay. And I do have some Splenda, and I could go grab it, but I don't want to hold up the video. Let's see. Vanilla's been added. Five eggs. These are five eggs that I beat. They were large. Rosemary might have used mediums, and usually recipes are based on a medium egg. That's how much I know about baking. Um, but most of us don't buy medium eggs. Most of us buy large eggs. I do. I go by the price per dozen or something, and if there's more less than a seven cent spread, you're better off getting the more the bigger eggs. If there's less than a seven cent difference between the two sizes of eggs, you're getting more for your money with the bigger egg. If it's less than it's a seven cents or less spread, just so you know, that might not be true anymore. It was true many many years ago when I was a frugal young cook trying to make ends meet. Okay, and I'm just mixing this up as you can see. My camera actually works pretty good. I mean, my this is my laptop I just got. I'm going to taste it. If it's not sweet enough, I am going to grab. Let me see. It tastes really peanut buttery. And it has a really nice flavor. And I think it's well sweet enough. You know how some things aren't as sweet once you bake them. But, okay, you see it? Now, I'm just going to find... An appropriate size cake pan and spray it and pour this in it and bake it at the 350 degrees for 30 minutes and see what happens. And when it's all done, I will show it to you. It might be when it's all done and it's cool, so I really taste it the way you should taste it once it's set in. 
I have made cakes like this, um, and maybe because I've tried to do rosemary, I'll show you the one I made up, which was an espresso chocolate cake. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. When I make things up, rosemary comes from an Atkins background, and so she's really hardcore about protein and no um, carbs. And I come from more of a South Beach background, so so she where she would use butter... The, the fat content bothers me just a little back in the back of my head, even though, you know, if it was shortbread, you'd use butter. But I figured, well, I'll use the applesauce because, you know. Um, but I would tend to look at things by the end result of the calories. I might even use a little spelt flour or stuff like that um, rather than using the scoops of protein, although the protein is really better for you. You know, it's sort of six of one half dozen of another. I kind of look at the, the end result calorie count. Rosemary's looking for the biggest bang for her protein buck, and she's a smart cookie. So let me get this in the oven, and we'll see you later. Let me cut this little sucker right off. And we're back with the cake. All done. There. I baked it in the uh, toaster oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. There it goes. And, an, and like, 9-inch cake pan. Um, and I will say uh, it did not rise a whole lot. But if I had doubled the baking powder, maybe it would have risen some more. It, it is very warm. It is nummy. I can't wait to try it when it's cold. But I'm going to tell you that it's, it is almost like a warm, very moist, um, peanut buttery flavored pudding cake. I mean, when you have um, tre leche cake, you take a cake, you poke a bunch of holes in it, and you pour in the, you know, the evaporated sweet and condensed milk stuff and all that jazz or coconut cream or make coconut cake you know how those are really dense moist they're kind of moist cakes you put in the refrigerator this is more like that than a big dry <coughs> where's the milk chocolate cake this is definitely got a wonderful peanut butter flavor and um it's full of protein which was the whole point of rosemary making it in the first place let's remember rosemary's about getting protein in everything she eats why just have dessert that does nothing for you but be dessert when you can put protein in it. And that is our rosemary, always leading the way in the protein challenges. So I think it's very tasty. I love custardy. I love custard. I like any kind of sponge cake. This is kind of a sponge cake with custardy kind of peanut buttery. It's nummy. I think a little drizzle of sugar-free chocolate syrup would not go awry. And that's it. You guys take care. I hope that helped you with Rosemary. I love you, and I think your recipe is wonderful. Bye! Nope, that didn't do it either. There I go. Bye!